Hey guys, this is Cody and Abby again um, with student development. So last week we talked about uh, time management and we, we had given a survey about that two weeks ago. And so this week what we're doing is we're going to talk to you guys about stress management. And when me and Abby looked at the survey results for stress management, you guys like gave us so much information. Um, and so that was a good thing. Now, what we're going to try to do is rather than try to answer all of those questions, we're going to make a series of videos because there was a lot of questions. There was a lot of surveys submitted for this one, and it's clear you guys are stressed out. So rather than try to get everything into one video, we're going to break this up in chunks. Um, and so for week one, the topics that we kind of saw, we saw one, we saw studying at home was stressing you out. We saw balancing school, work, and home, so kind of a school life balance type thing, and a pandemic was stressing you out. And then we saw that that there was kind of a, some issues and some stress with self-care and purpose. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to do studying at home. And we're going to do that because that's what you guys are doing. We think that that's probably going to be the most beneficial to you. And so um, as we get into that, I'm going to turn it over to Abby, and she's going to talk about making the most of your time. Hey everybody, this is Abby. So when it comes to studying at home, obviously our time is really valuable. So number one, you want to plan ahead when you're going to study. So we're not just going to study whenever you find some free time. You need to actually put that into a schedule. Um, and also, if you are a morning person, take advantage of that. You know, study in the morning, get your homework done. That way, you know, you can have the rest of the day to do other things around the house. Um, also, make sure you prioritize what needs to be done first. Um, you're gonna have stuff that's more important that might take more time. Um, so kind of delegate where you're gonna spend time and like I said, plan ahead. Doing a calendar, setting reminders in your phone, um, timers on your phone are good for studying because we want you to take breaks. So you're not just gonna study for two hours straight. You know, study for about 30 minutes, take a 15 minute break, get up, move around, go outside. Um, and then come back to your studies and that way you can get the most out of your time. So Abby, as you were talking about this, one of the things that I thought about, uh, and I'm going to kind of push you on the spot, so I'm sorry, is a lot of our students I know are talking about having kids and working from home. Now mm -hmm. I have two teenagers. Uh, they're pretty self-sufficient. They go in their room, they study, they make their own food. So I don't have to worry about that too much, but you, have a younger kid right now. And I know one of the things we talked about is how you're making that work. Do you have any any tips that you can think of that you've been using to balance being a mom, taking care of you know your child, but also making sure, I know you're not a student, but you are working from home and you are getting those things done. Well, the first week or two was kind of rough because I was just doing things when I found the time. Um, mm -hmm. But then I like figured out the schedule more, how long it would take me to do certain things. Um, my son's schedule, so whenever he naps, that's when I do certain things that I can't necessarily do while he's awake. Um, so just like I said, delegating when you have that free time and like what is a good task to complete during that time. Um, but it's kind of a trial and error. Um, you're not going to get this per first try, so you just got to find what works for you. Yeah, that, and that's good tips. And so one of the things I, you know, I kind of honed in on that and thought about that uh, is because I know I know that's one of the things our students are talking about, especially who are parents, is is getting those things done. And I know me and you have been talking about that, and uh, and like making sure you know whenever you're you know like we've had meetings before around nap time, you know, mm -hmm. so making sure yeah. that we work within a schedule the best we can. So guys, the next thing that we're looking at is asking for help, uh, teachers, family members you know, um, et cetera. So I think one of the things that we have to realize is we're all in this pandemic together. And so what I mean by that is like, yes, this is influencing you, a student in a pandemic, and you have been thrown into a distance learning or online course when you were on campus. But this is also affecting your family members. It's also affecting your teachers. And one of the things that we know is that we're stronger together. And so um, learning to rely on one another right now, I think is going to be essential. And communicating with your teachers is one of the best things that you can do. Now, I have a, I've talked about this before uh, in things that we've done. I teach here as well, and I teach psychology. And I will say um, a lot of the communication that I was getting, even in my online classes, 
I'm not getting as much now. Students aren't communicating as much as they were before. And so the classes I have that are on campus that have switched online, the communication is pretty non-existent as well. And so I even am reaching out and saying, hey, here's here's how to contact me. Here's you know a group me. Here's this, here's that. And students still aren't always communicating. So communicating with your teachers is one of the best things that you can do um, whenever we're talking about you know studying at home, learning at home, and managing stress that is caused by those topics. Uh, I say that because your faculty members will often be understanding and maybe even work with you about things. And so one of the things that I'm seeing is when students don't get work done, a lot of times they won't even contact me. We're in a pandemic. I know things are going on. I'm, I'm going to be flexible. And I think a lot of your teachers are going to be flexible with you if you're communicating and if you're trying. All right. So I would say communicate with your teachers, talk to your instructors. If they have virtual office hours or they've given you a phone number that you can reach them at, give them a call and let them know what's going on and see if maybe if they can, they also may have some pointers and some ideas to help. Uh, one of the things too that I think would be really good for you guys to do as students to help manage stress when it comes to communication and, and being stronger together is classroom communication. So how are you communicating with the other students in your class? Um, and this is especially beneficial if you have group projects or things like that that you have to get done. But it, even if you don't, a lot of times the peers in your class may understand something differently than you do, and they can offer insight and help. And so, you know, having study sessions via Zoom may be a good option or whatever web platform you have, Facebook Messenger, Google Hangouts, there's all, all kinds of free ways to message one another. Um, also, another thing that I've noticed is a, a lot of the students in my class are, are using a group me and they're able to text message one another and talk to each other um, about topics. Uh, one time I got an email from a student that in the group me they didn't understand a particular topic. So one student took it upon themselves to email me so they could relay it back to the group. So like talking and communicating with your classmates just as you would in a normal classroom setting is going to be important. You just need to find a way to do that, whether that is through the phone group me, you know, or maybe you, you do uh, <clears throat> FaceTiming chats or you do it through your computer with Zoom or Facebook Messenger or something like that. Um, and then, Abby, I think the third thing that we're really going to look at today is study environment. So I think you had some tips about that, right? Yes. So obviously studying at home is a lot different than being in the classroom and being on campus, being able to go to the library and have those designated areas. So we want to encourage you to find a consistent designated area to study at home. Um, and this obviously needs to be an area where you're not going to be easily distracted. Um, definitely doesn't need to be your bed because if we're studying on our bed, obviously we're going to associate that with sleeping um, and probably not going to retain as much information as we would being in an organized, you know, um, place that's not our bedroom. So a quiet place if possible. Obviously, we understand that during this time, um, you might be around a whole lot of people in your home, um, but if you can find a space where it's quiet, well lit, um, where you're gonna be able to stay alert, those are kind of things that just set up a good study environment. And obviously that's gonna help you be more um, meaningful with your time and be able to get more done. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and one of the things that I want to I want to just stress right now um, is something that we see on a college campus, um, Abby, and I think we're, we're seeing it now, too, when we hear students being stressed out about their study environment and, and not getting things done. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our mindset is the issue. Uh, and sometimes we struggle with what's new and we don't want to adapt very easily. And one of the things that I would really suggest for students is to take a look at their thought patterns, their thought processes, and, and try to be aware of when that's happening. Because just because you can't have something that's ideal, something that you want, um, doesn't mean that you can't progress. So one of, the, one of the sayings that I use a lot with our students on campus, and I think it applies here um, with what we're talking about with uh, the study environment at home, and just trying to be a student in a, in a pandemic right now is don't let perfection get in the way of progress. Uh, anything that you can do 
to work on your schoolwork, to work on your class, to study is valuable, even if it's not what it once was. Uh, so don't let perfection get in the way of progress, because I know one of the things I saw in this survey was I don't feel like I'm prepared for, you know, the next semester transferring like let's 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 not spiral out of control going to the future. You know, um, let's stay in the here and the now and let's get through this. Let's get through this, because I mean, I will tell you as a person with a master's degree and a license in counseling, there were times the next semester, two or three semesters on that I had to look back at things and refresh my memory. And I, I wasn't in a pandemic at all. So don't let perfection get in the way of progress. All right. So guys, we're, we're going to wrap this video up. Our last video was about 20 minutes and we're shooting for less time this time just to keep you guys engaged. Next, either video or blog topic we're going to talk about is balancing school, work and home. So the school life balance type thing in a pandemic. So we will see you guys next week. I hope this was helpful. If you have any, any questions, comments, or concerns, just get in touch with us at Student Development. Email is a great way to do that, studentdevelopment at uaccm.edu. You guys have a good day. Have a great week.